the path of the spiritual warrior. In its new messages, the divine spirit Kryon helps us remember who we truly are, that each of us is a warrior of the spirit whose purpose is to defeat darkness, primarily within ourselves and in our lives, to find the path to light, the path to God, to contribute to the enlightenment of the earth and its people. The spiritual warrior is also a trailblazer. He seeks his paths and his truths. He is dissatisfied with beaten paths. He does not need spiritual leaders and various organizations ready to take seekers under their wing. He trusts only his heart. He seeks what resonates in his soul. He goes to himself. His weapons are truth, knowledge, and love. He battles darkness, ignorance, evil, hatred, destruction. To conquer darkness means to conquer misfortunes, unhappiness and suffering. This means to win wars and discord among people. And this is within your power. Introduction. Who is a spiritual warrior? This is a person who has wanted to become one and has expressed the corresponding intention. Nothing else is required. Only your desire and your belief that this path is yours. You want to follow it because this is your destiny. What is the purpose of a spiritual warrior? to conquer darkness, primarily within oneself and in one's life, to find the path to light, the path to God, to contribute to the enlightenment of the earth and its people. Everyone does this in their own way, because the path of the spiritual warrior is always unique. The spiritual warrior is also a trailblazer. He seeks his paths and his truths. He is dissatisfied with beaten paths. He does not need spiritual leaders and various organizations ready to take seekers under their wing. He trusts only his heart. He seeks what resonates in his soul. He goes to himself. He is not afraid to be different, not like everyone else. He came to earth to reveal the power of his spirit and his entire life is dedicated to this task. Does a spiritual warrior have weapons? Yes, it is truth, knowledge and love. Does a spiritual warrior fight? Yes, he battles darkness, ignorance, evil, hatred, destruction. But these battles are not aimed at defeating anyone. They are aimed at creation. They are for the good of all humanity. Because this is not the struggle of people, it is the struggle of energies. To conquer darkness means to conquer misfortunes, unhappiness and suffering. This means to win wars and discord among people. This is in the interests of all people, although not everyone understands this yet. A spiritual warrior has many excellent qualities, and here is one of them. He never gives up. He does not give in to problems, hardships, misfortunes, and illnesses, because the spirit is the source of his power. The spirit makes him stronger than all earthly adversities. After all, the spirit draws its strength not from the earthly three-dimensional world. The spirit comes from another dimension, more precisely, from multidimensionality. The spirit comes from the divine home. From there, all people come, though they have forgotten about it. Everyone can remember who they are and become a spiritual warrior. If you choose this path, this book is for you. In its new messages, Cryon, as always with infinite love, imparts knowledge that will help us become stronger and, of course, happier on this path. And here, you will also find powerful techniques that will allow you to find your path, your purpose, to wield the weapons of the spiritual warrior most effectively and to achieve victory after victory. Humanity has a bright future, says Cryon to us. And you, spiritual warriors, pioneers and heroes, create it. Each of you is a hero, do you know that? Dare and remember that we are always with you, to help you, to support you and of course, to confess our love to you. Chapter 1. The Purpose of the Spiritual Warrior Within each of you lives the spirit of the warrior. Hello, dear ones. Cryon greets you in these precious moments when we meet in the energies of our common divine home. You are those whose efforts raise the veil. You are those through whom the energies of the divine home come to earth. You are those thanks to whom our meeting is possible. We could not come to you if you had not created the conditions here for the manifestation of divine energies. We, being on our side of the veil, still communicate with you. And this is a miracle that could not have happened just 30-something years ago. Over the time since then, you have changed the world. You did it, although many of you still do not believe in your own strengths and abilities. We often call you spiritual warriors. Sometimes you think it's just a beautiful metaphor. No, dear ones, it's the truth. 
Would you like to better understand what we mean by saying this? The time for that has come. We hear and know your questions. Who is a spiritual warrior? How do I become a spiritual warrior? Is a warrior someone who fights? And who and how should we fight? Is a warrior a man? And what if I'm a woman? Is a warrior someone who destroys the enemy? Do we also have to fight to the death? A warrior and a peaceful life, how do you reconcile that? Dear ones, I am ready to answer your questions, but do you know that the answers are already known to you? Within each of you lives the spirit of the warrior. You have forged it for centuries, and sometimes millennia. You have all been preparing for this incarnation, to come to it fully armed and take part in the decisive battle between light and darkness. Yes, the decisive battle is happening now, and you all dreamt of being on Earth at this time. And you are happy to be where you are now. You are all spiritual warriors, dear ones. All, men and women, because the spirit has no gender. And each of you has been incarnated many times in both male and female bodies. And you are all well armed to defeat darkness. And you all know what it is to battle darkness. And you know what qualities you need to win. Let me remind you of this. Just remind you of what you already know but have forgotten. So let's talk about who a spiritual warrior is and what his purpose is. Let's remember some forgotten truths and dispel some misconceptions. A spiritual warrior is a peaceful warrior. A spiritual warrior is not a warrior in the traditional human understanding. A spiritual warrior is not someone who fights, charges ahead, kills and risks being killed in battles, not for life, but for death. A spiritual warrior does not engage in battles in the usual sense of the word for you, and certainly he does not kill anyone. A spiritual warrior is a peaceful warrior. His weapons are the light and love of God. His battles are peaceful. There are no victims in them. These battles ultimately aim for the highest good of all. His weapon is a power capable of winning without fighting, of winning without shedding blood. What happens when you turn on the light in a dark room? Does the light fight the darkness? Does it try to forcefully drive away the darkness? No, it simply asserts itself. I am, it says, and the darkness retreats. It defeats it with its mere presence. Such is the power of light. Such is your power, dear spiritual warriors. This power is not for show, not to play with, and not to intimidate the enemy. This power is for action and victory. You are awakening this power within yourself now. It is within you. It was initially given to you as sparks of God, sparks in which not some small part of God's abilities is manifested, but all of his possibilities. You have been developing this power Yourself. You have been training your spirit for many incarnations, and now you have come to earth, not to fight, but to win. Dear ones, spiritual maturity comes when you renounce war. As long as you fight, as long as you resist each other, you remain immature humanity. And for a long time it seemed that you, humanity, would never emerge from this immaturity, that the earth would remain in darkness that you would destroy yourselves with endless fighting against each other, and the history of humanity would end there. It could have happened many times. How many prophecies about the end of the world have been left to you by your predecessors? Quite a few, right? And all of them could have come true. The latest such prophecies were related to 2000, then to 2012, and these dates really could have been the last ones. No one made any prophecies about the further history. Why? because history could have ended with these dates, but not only because of that. Also, because in the event of its continuation, history becomes so uncertain that it is impossible to predict it. And you are in this uncertainty now. You have entered a period that no one could have predicted. This means you are now creating history yourselves, and it becomes what you create it to be. You, spiritual warriors, came to Earth precisely now to put an end to wars. You came to proclaim the priorities of the spirit, you came to lead humanity from childhood to maturity. You are pioneers. You are the ones who carry a new world within you. You brought the seeds of this new world to earth, and you are the ones called to sprout these seeds and then nurture and protect the seedlings. Yes, it is peaceful labor, but until the victory of light is final, even for peaceful labor, you must be warriors. You bring the values of the spirit to earth, and you all know very well how many obstacles your work encounters. A warrior is one who is not afraid. For a long time, Earth lived in linear time and three-dimensional space. 
This world was very far from multidimensionality from divine energies, and people lived here knowing nothing else. Those solitary individuals who occasionally appeared on Earth to bring divine truths here were doomed. People could welcome them with enthusiasm, as their souls yearned for change. But later they were executed, crucified, burned at the stakes, or simply expelled, because these solitary ones carried truths that demanded too great changes from people. People were not ready for this. They wanted to live better, but they did not want to change. They did not want to acknowledge that all changes are possible only from within. They thought that these solitary ones, prophets, spiritual teachers, saints, enlightened masters, would bring them a better life, and they themselves would not have to do anything. But their expectations turned out to be unjustified, because enlightened teachers said, change yourself, discover God within yourself, and you will be able to change both your life and the planet you live on. But this was not in the plans of people who were too accustomed to living in darkness and afraid even to glance at the light out of the corner of their eye. They felt deceived, and they executed the enlightened messengers, taking revenge on them for their disappointment. Dear ones, we are saying now, no one will bring you a better life if you do not create it yourselves. God will not come to you if you do not discover him within yourself. But now you have become older and wiser. Now more and more people accept these truths and no longer seek to deal with those who carry them. That's why it's much easier for spiritual warriors now than in past centuries. At least you are not threatened with death penalty, not persecuted for your beliefs. And yet, darkness continues to resist. Darkness takes defense in people's souls and still tries to intimidate you so that you dare not openly carry your light. Do you understand why you need to be warriors? To not be afraid, to not retreat, to be resilient, to not give up, even when it seems that darkness is winning. Dear ones, you must know that darkness cannot win. The battle is still ongoing, but its outcome is predetermined. Its outcome is the victory of light. There might have been doubts about this until 2012, but you have passed this mark. You have done it, contrary to all gloomy prophecies, and there is no turning back. Earth will not return to darkness because humanity has made a different choice. This may surprise you, but most of the Earth's population has said yes to the light. Yes to love and unity among people. Yes to a new world. Yes to creating heaven on Earth. Most people said yes unconsciously, even those who still live under the power of darkness. But their souls also long for the light, and they said yes even without realizing it. God sees the true intentions of people, even unconscious ones. God accepted humanity's yes, and you have entered a new world. It's difficult, through resistance of darkness, through resistance of your own traditions and habits, through resistance of your own negative programs and emotions, karmic predispositions, and inclination to dramas. But you have done it. The battle is going on in the soul of each of you. You, spiritual warriors, have found yourselves in the forefront again, and you are the first to overcome the still resisting darkness. And you know what I will answer when you ask. Cryon, how do I defeat darkness in people's souls? I will answer, start with yourself. Dear ones, what is happening is not a struggle of people. It is a struggle of energies. And this is the main difference from battles in the usual sense of the word for you. You don't need to defeat other people. You need to defeat the dark energies. The struggle with them unfolds in the soul of every person. There is no point in fighting with others if the battle is going on inside you. When you fight with others, you deny the fact that the main battle is within you. You are shifting this battle somewhere outside. And in the end, you are fighting phantoms. By fighting with others, you are actually fighting with yourself. You are fighting with something within yourself that you do not want to accept. You deny that it exists within you, and therefore, in your thoughts, you project it onto another person and fight with them. This is not the battle of a spiritual warrior. This is the battle of ordinary selfish consciousness, stuck in its dramas and not seeing the true state of affairs. A spiritual warrior is someone who defeats darkness primarily within themselves. They start with themselves and do not see anything unworthy or shameful in it. A spiritual warrior never says, I am a hero and others are villains and I must defeat them. This is not the logic of spirit. This is the logic of the old energy, the logic of divided consciousness, the logic of immature humanity, 
still thinking that there can be winners in war. When you fight with each other, there can be no winners. Everyone loses. Because you, humanity, are united. And when you fight with each other, you are fighting with yourselves. A spiritual warrior lives by a different logic, divine logic. It is the logic of wisdom, enlightenment, truth. A spiritual warrior knows that darkness seeks and finds refuge in their soul. And they start with themselves, but they do not fight with themselves. They simply ignite the light. And with this light, they illuminate all the dark areas in their soul. It takes courage, dear ones, and it takes strength. Do you understand now why it is important for you to be warriors? To not be scared of the darkness in your own soul. To find the courage and strength to look it straight in the face. Not to turn away, not to start denying, not to run away in fear. Yes, this is darkness, and I see it. Victory begins with this acknowledgement, and I have the strength to turn it into light. This intention proclaims the determination to win. Dear ones, do you still doubt that you are warriors? Do you think that a spiritual warrior is someone who never experiences defeat? Someone who has completely expelled darkness from their soul? Or is a warrior someone who others step aside for in fear? Someone endowed with absolute strength, knowing no weaknesses, setbacks or failures? No, dear ones. The battle continues. It is not over yet. Darkness is doomed, but it does not retreat yet. If victory were final, you would not need to be warriors. But the battle goes on, which means defeats are possible in it. And you should not be afraid of sometimes finding yourself in the grip of darkness and feeling defeated. A warrior is not someone who never loses. A warrior is someone who, having lost, heals their wounds, gathers strength, and goes on the offensive again. Dear ones, we know what you have been through. We know that each of you has had your own dark night of the soul. It was a period when you did not see the light. It was a period when you lost the meaning of life. It was a period of losses, suffering, and depression. You have passed through this, and you have survived, and even more, you have found meaning, you have found light, you have found your path, and you doubt that this is the path of a warrior. Each of you has had significant defeats and great victories behind you. You have been on this path for a long time. If you doubt and consider yourself weak, you're mistaken. If you don't look like a warrior at all, it doesn't mean anything. Your spirit looks like a true warrior. He is clad in shining armour of love and armed with the sword of truth. And he knows that victory is his. This is who you truly are. You fulfil your purpose when you live in harmony with yourself. If you believe that becoming a spiritual warrior requires some special ritual and initiation, ask God to give you initiation. What does it take? Only your intention. What does it mean to intend to become a spiritual warrior? It means that you have the intention to fulfil your purpose. The purpose that you have chosen for this incarnation. Yes, you have already chosen to be a spiritual warrior, each of you. And now if you wish, you can confirm this to the Almighty. You can confirm that you firmly intend to walk the path of light and openly carry your light. You can confirm that you intend to bring the values of the Spirit into the world, making them a priority for yourself. You can confirm your readiness to work for the victory of light, to bring divine energies into everything you do on earth using all the means available to you, and to do it in the best possible way. You can confirm that you are ready to demand your power and to manifest the best qualities of your spirit, expressing them in earthly conditions for the benefit of yourself and all people. You can confirm your intention to discover and fulfill your purpose, in which the qualities of your spirit are best realized. You can confirm your intention to become a peaceful warrior, whose weapons are the divine energies of love and truth. You can do this at any moment when you are ready. But do not wait too long. Do not think that you lack something and you are not strong enough. Believe me, you already have everything you need right now. If you think that the path of a spiritual warrior imposes some restrictions on you and deprives you of certain opportunities, you are mistaken. On the contrary, this path removes limitations and gives unlimited possibilities. It gives freedom. It allows you to become truly yourself, who you truly are. When you embark on this path, suffering ends, dramas end, and real life begins. You find your place and start doing what you are called to do. With this comes peace, tranquility, joy, and happiness. Do not be afraid of the words about destiny, 
They do not mean that you must necessarily do something great that will instantly change the planet. You do not have to do more than you are capable of, and certainly you should not sacrifice yourself. Each of you wins when you live in harmony with yourself and your soul. To do what you are called to do means to live in harmony with your soul. A person who lives in harmony with their soul and puts their soul into what they do, even occupying, from their point of view, a very modest place, is able to change the planet to a greater extent than some politicians and world celebrities. You can raise children, contribute to peace in your family, build homes for people, cook food or write books, and bring so much light to it that the Earth, thanks to you, will never be the same again. And this will mean that you are fulfilling the purpose of a spiritual warrior. You are used to associating the word warrior with harsh military everyday life, so the path of the spiritual warrior still scares you. But the path of the spiritual warrior is not war, the path of the spiritual warrior is peace. And first of all, it is peace with oneself and peace with one's reality. Why then do we use this word, which in your tradition is so closely associated with war? Because there is no more accurate word reflecting the resilience of the spirit, the ability not to give up, and the determination to win. Accept this convention. And yet let me tell you, you are true warriors, warriors of the spirit. You have confirmed this with your glorious path through many incarnations. With each step, you moved towards victory and brought victory closer, even when it seemed to you that you suffered defeat, and you continue to walk this path, even if you feel that you are not warriors at all. Dear ones, it is enough for each of you to decide for yourself that you are a warrior, and you will become warriors. It's that simple. This is the reality of the new time. Your intentions are realized instantly, and your thoughts change your reality instantly. You have already changed the world. We love and respect you immensely for this, and this is what it is. Cry on practice exercise. Intention to embark on the path of the spiritual warrior. At any moment when you are ready, you can confirm to the Almighty your intention to embark on the path of the spiritual warrior. For this, in a peaceful environment alone with yourself, say aloud approximately the following words. Dear Almighty, I am a spiritual warrior, as I came to Earth in this incarnation to fulfill my purpose. My purpose is to be a conduit of divine energies and openly carry divine light in my heart. I am ready to fulfill my purpose so that the qualities of my spirit are best realized in it. Here and now, I express a firm intention to bring the values of the spirit into the world, making them a priority for myself. I confirm my readiness to work for the victory of light, to carry divine energies into everything I do on earth, using all the means available to me and doing it in the best possible way. I confirm my readiness to demand my power and to manifest the best qualities of my spirit, expressing them in earthly conditions for the benefit of myself and all people. I confirm my intention to become a peaceful warrior whose weapons are divine energies of love and truth. I ask for your blessing, as well as your help and support on the path of the spiritual warrior. It is enough to express this intention once. Exercise. Reinterpretation of the past. Remember situations from your life when you fell into despair, lowered your hands, or were afraid of something. Do not blame yourself for this. Tell yourself that this is the past and it has long gone. You have changed a lot since then. At that time, you did not yet know that you were a spiritual warrior. You did not yet know your strength and had not yet discovered the warrior qualities in yourself. You can now reinterpret your past, looking at it through the eyes of a warrior. It's okay if you remember moments when you were or seemed weak to yourself. You are not always obligated to be strong. Give yourself the right to weakness too. Tell yourself that in the eyes of God, you are perfect because you have a perfect spirit. But in the earthly world, there is no perfection, and here you play imperfect roles. They do not reflect your true essence but help to experience energies. You play weakness only to recognize your strength in contrast. Remembering moments from the past when you showed weakness, tell yourself, it was necessary at that moment. It was justified. It was a lesson I needed. I needed to go through this to come to who I am now. I am a part of God, and I am a spiritual warrior, and I needed to go through weakness to discover strength within myself. I accept both my weakness and my strength. I accept myself as I am. Everything that happens to me, 
I accept as a lesson and as a step to the next level. I am a spiritual warrior. I move forward and I cannot be stopped. Reviewing episodes of your past in this way where you showed weakness, tell yourself, I went through this and I survived. I did not give up. I tempered my warrior spirit. I became stronger and will become even stronger. Then turn to your present. Is there anything in it that you are afraid of, that makes you hesitate, that makes you lower your hands? Remind yourself that within you lives the spirit of a warrior that you temper. Tell yourself that you are a spiritual warrior and you do not give up. Go through life with this motto, exercise, conduit of divine energies. Do you think you fulfill your purpose as a spiritual warrior? Do you have something that you love and to which you devote yourself? It doesn't have to be something grand. It's not even necessarily a profession. It can be any activity that makes your soul sing. When your soul sings, you emit light, and you bring this light into what you do. Thus, you transform the world by bringing divine energies into it. Because when we do something with love, we bring divine energies into the world. Try to carry light literally with every step, every action, every deed. Whatever you do, try to avoid automatism. Act consciously, even if you're just watering flowers or doing chores. Imagine that your eyes, your hands, your whole body emit light, and its energy fills everything around you. And make sure to devote at least a little time every day to activities you love. Tell yourself that you do this for God. You do this for the Spirit. Turn to God with the intention of becoming a conduit of divine energies when you engage in what you love. Imagine that these energies flow through you, work through you, this is how you will fulfill your purpose. It is important that you truly enjoy this and feel comfortable. 